Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you guys have a Chevy or GMC vehicle guys and you have a code such as P057C, stay with us guys and we'll explain what that means, what causes that and uh, how we are going to diagnose the system and how we will find out what's wrong with the code, uh, with the problem guys, what, what causes that problem. So, quick introduction guys, we'll have more than 200 videos on uh, every guy's car we get at the shop every Chevy every Ford every BM that we will get guys will make at least 200 videos why because our mission is to save you as much money as we can so please subscribe to the channel like the video hopefully guys you will find the information helpful so let's go ahead start on it and show you what's wrong with it guys I'm going to uh, demonstrate quick to you now we are going to press the brake paddle in a little bit to see uh, to see if the brakes are working because when you get that code guys your brakes will be either stuck on all the time or they will not work at all and we will explain why so now I'm inside the vehicle I'm going to go ahead okay start the car car is started now let me turn the lights off okay and you can see that the engine light is on okay no matter what I do that engine light just stays on guys let me actually even turn the light off okay so you can see the engine light even better so engine light is on and we get that code now we'll get a person okay to come inside and press the brakes quick okay and we're going to see what happens now guys okay let's hold the brakes all the way okay all the way we're holding what happens here we have no brakes guys at all so brakes do not work let's turn the headlights on okay to see if the lights work lights work brakes don't so Let's explain guys, okay, how we'll find out what's wrong with it, how we're going to test the component and if you need help uh, with any of, to get any tools, any parts, anything like that guys, check out the links in the description of the video below, we share the, uh, the parts guys and everything there. So, what I'm going to do, I'll connect that scanner now guys, we will explain about that one in a little bit, a little bit more. Find your OBD port, it looks like that, uh, if you have a Chevy GMC vehicle that's past 1996, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this one, it goes only one certain way. So, it might be a little bit tight if it's a brand new car, or the scanner is brand new because it just hasn't been used. So, I'll go ahead and turn the car off. We'll turn the ignition on. And now guys, moment of the truth. Now this scanner is amazing why because that scanner guys can read and delete calls from every computer guys in your car and i talk not just about chevy and gmc vehicles i'm talking about guys pretty much okay pretty much guys uh any vehicle check out all the makes that it supports now or you can just click usa makes european makes you can click asia so it's pretty cool right so many things that it supports guys so what i do i usually click gm on ours because uh, chevy and gmc they're made by general motors okay it's going to load it will take just a little bit of time we're going to click manual selection or we can do automatic if you want passenger car chevy cruise right here and it should actually work for Buick guys as well Buick, GMC and Chevy Why? Because all of them uh, share okay, the same platform So now we have the 1.8 engine Doesn't matter what it is But uh, they use the same, um, the same components guys Many of the components on Chevy, GMC and Buick cars are interchangeable So we click other Okay and now we're going to select diagnostics We're going to select control unit and here guys we have a few things okay that we can check one is okay check out all the computers by the way in this car you can scan everything here and you have uh, multiple sub computers underneath each option so we're going to select live data for body control guys and that code guys indicates that you have problems with your brake light switch most likely guys so I want to show you a few things here. Okay, let me see exactly where that thing was. I think it was on the chassis. Okay, yep. Brake pedal applied, it says inactive. I haven't pressed the brake pedal at all. So if I go ahead and press the brake pedal, what's going to happen? It still says inactive, guys. Nothing changes. Brake pedal pulled from release position, no. Brake pedal position sensor, 
Okay, we will have brake paddle position sensor voltage, none guys. Brake paddle position sensor, voltage here doesn't show almost anything. It's like, okay, that brake paddle is not working at all guys. Okay, you can see just like not registering anything here. It's like you're not applying the brake, which is very scary guys because uh, <coughs> your brakes will not work. And if you get in a situation like that, okay, it could be dangerous. So we'll go back. I'm going to go ahead and click now. Okay, under control unit, engine control, and we're going to select, okay, let's read the trouble codes and see if we have that code here now. Okay, P057C, brake paddle position sensor, circuit low voltage, right there. So, that's guys, what's causing that problem now. So, let me go ahead, turn the car off, and I'll explain what needs to be done, okay, to fix that, and we'll see after we replace the brake paddle position sensor, how that will take care of the problem. So I'm by the brake pedal and the gas pedal guys underneath, okay, super uncomfortable position by the way. And on the brake pedal, this is the brake pedal, we have that switch guys, okay, this is called the brake pedal position switch or brake light switch, okay, right here. So, this switch guys, usually you have one wire and one nut or bolt holding it, some they have clips depending on the design, they just don't even have any bolts or anything like that. And super easy to remove this one, you disconnect the wire, remove the, the nut or the bolt, I think it was a bolt and pull it out. Now, we have a video on the channel how to remove and replace one, how to calibrate one, because some vehicles will require that. If you want to see, check it out. The purpose of today's video is to see if a new switch will fix that. So make sure you stay until the end, and if you need to buy one, check out the link in the description of the video below. So we'll go ahead and replace ours now. So the switch has been replaced, or brake power position sensor, also known as brake light switch. So now we're going to go ahead, turn the ignition switch on, Okay, I'm going to get the computer quick. Okay, let's see now. I'm going to go ahead and clear the code. Okay, again. Let's scan the system. Okay, and you see that it says passed and failed history, guys. So, that code is gone now. So, we're going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to reread. Nothing came back. So, I'll go back to the body control module and we're going to see the live data now to see if the brake light switch works. So, I don't have the switch. Okay, the brake pressed in now. So, let's go ahead and see. It's loading, it says brake applied inactive. Okay, check it out now what will happen when I press the brake. It says active, guys. I'm pressing the brake now and you can see the voltage and the percentage, guys. Okay, you can see right here, you have brake paddle sensor, that's the voltage, so different output means that I'm pressing on it more, watch now, I'm pressing quite a bit, okay, all the way down, it's at 2.4 volts now, brake paddle released, it's at 108, the calculated brake paddle position right now, it's negative 1, so we might need to recalibrate that one, okay, and brake applied now at 17, 20, 29, so you can see 30 percent that we pressed it. So that definitely guys takes care of our problem. Now if you have any questions guys let us know, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time.